Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Just ready for Jagat. How are you all doing? Thanks, Harsha, Gauss, Akhil, Ravi, Prakash. Good to see you guys here. Hey, Akhil. Jagat, good evening. Good evening, Jagat. Nice to see you. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, I just thought I'll wear this T-shirt today. It says uh, super intelligent. Okay. So whatever that means, <laughs> but then what, it, what you do with an intelligence is a different story, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, also, so apt. also apt. Uh, apt. Okay. So good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, let me just quickly say hi to what are the names that I see. I see Prakash, I see Ravi, I see Akhil, I see Gauss, I see Harsha, Sunil, Giridhar, Amar, and quite a few other names. Okay, so really appreciate this that you guys are taking out on a Saturday evening. Thank you so much. Of course, let your friends know. Let's all join in and we must talk about the ecosystem and uh, what's happening. So very quickly, what, what we'll be doing today is, yes, Jagat also has some information to share. We want to make it interactive, all right? So, Jagat, what we'll do is very crisp and clean. You whatever you need to push, push out, and then I've, I'm, I'm enabling the raise hand option. Whoever wants to come in and say hi, talk about uh, anything that you can, whatever we can do to help. From my side, I have a few small announcements around the ecosystems. Uh, one is uh, many of you are part of the founders feed. You would have seen this very nice video that uh, Jagat has created, talking about some milestones, talking about his team etc etc we want to do more for the founders push them out let the world know that you guys are doing some phenomenal work your innovations etc that's number one we have the type women entrepreneur program we wanted to apply and we also it's for women co-founders and please join us all everyone can join us on 19 and uh, jagat those those nice sessions that we are doing the business mentoring sessions and uh, emotional well-being sessions done by chino happy to have all of you join us interact discuss and uh, you know digital networking all these are important and critical things. But now, over to you, Jagat, for a crisp share. How are things going? How are you staying you know, strong and uh, growing and figuring things out? Over to you, boss. Thank you. And uh, of course, as I said, this will be a little bit different. I hope audible, all good, uh, sir. Just want a heads up from you. You just, just relocated back to my house. Uh, I was with my parents, you know, in the lockdown. But this morning, obviously, I just decided to get back to my base. And I'm really happy to actually be here, right? Uh, this is going to be a little different session. Uh, we're not going to sit here because this is really not something that as a founder, as an engineer, uh, you know, we are not psychologists or doctors or something like that. So we, we will you know, like to share a lot of things from our experience here and uh, very open to hearing from a lot of you guys, right? I'm seeing so many people joining in again, you know, Vijeta mentioned everyone. Thanks, guys, for really joining in. I see a lot of friends that we know and, and some new people as well. Uh, really nice to hear it, how you're actually you know, dealing with all the situation. Today's topic is a very interesting one. And I felt uh, this was you know, really important to at least discuss. Right? I don't think there are any clear answers here, but uh, definitely uh, you know, a topic worth discussing, which is called build during adversity. Um, these are really difficult times. right? Let's not uh, kid anybody. These are probably the toughest times that the country has faced. Uh, ever since independence, I, I don't think even during the war, uh, whether it's the Pakistan war, the Bangladesh war, the China war, I really don't think there was a kind of situation like we're facing today. Uh, it's really a unique situation. And, uh, you know, what I want to do now is just I, I have a few points here. I'm not going to do any big fancy presentation or mind map as I normally do. Uh, I want to keep this open, you know, open conversation and really, you know, also share some notes hopefully hear from a lot of our founder friends, right? I mean, they're all doing such fantastic work. Uh, I'm a student and I would love to hear from all of you how you're all also handling with the situations, okay? So that being the, you know, kind of uh, outline of what today is about, let's kind of have a context towards what, what why we're doing this. Uh, of course, these are tough times, but, you know, I just want to share a little bit from my own experience, right? I've been an entrepreneur now for probably, you know, over 10 years. And as all of you know, as founders, entrepreneurship is is riddled with you know adversity 
uh, you know, especially as a startup founder, uh, 90% of the time you're going to have adversity. But what makes the whole grind absolutely worthwhile is that the 10% of the time that life goes well and things happen in your favor is good enough to make you forget all the 90% of the adversities. This is my thought process. When you win, you win big. And you have to understand that, you know, failure, adversity is all part of the game, right? And that's why we are in this. Uh, people who are not entrepreneurs, of course, they are a lot more safeguarded from these ups and downs and the extent of the ups and downs, right? There is a certain sense of balance in their lives. And sometimes I envy them. I wish there was somebody here who could kind of give me a monthly salary. I would love that sometimes, right? But end of the day, we do this because we love what we do and nothing changes. So that being said, you know, just putting that context, saying that I'm not a psychologist, nor can I have some kind of a prescription to solve this issue. I think through debate and through discussion, exchanging notes with our peers, I think we all will benefit, right? So that being the spirit of this conversation, I encourage everyone, the moment, you know, once we are done with our conversation, as, uh, you know, Vijita said, we will open this up for conversation. Guys, feel free. This is not the time to, you know, sit back and just watch. Uh, you know, this is the time for you to come. Anything that you say, uh, you know, trust me, somebody is going to benefit from that, right? So please be proactive. I really encourage and call all of you out. Come on and share all you, all you have. Now, of course, I'm going to be, you know, referring to my notes a bit because this is not my area of expertise. Uh, but, you know, forgive me for that. But very quickly, you know, I have about seven, eight points that I want to share. Specifically with founders, guys, uh, this is a time where we are facing a dual battle. I think, you know, just starting up and trying to, you know, build the product, build the team, uh, acquire customers, keep the customers happy, raise investments, take care of your finance. You know, there is a ton of work that we keep doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Unfortunately, with the situation we have now, of course, there is the personal issues also that we have to face. End of the day, we're all family men and uh, some of them who are bachelors, maybe life is a little easier, but I, I'm married. I'm sure many of our founders here also are married. We have extra, we have you know, larger families to take care of. And definitely, I'm a guy who always believes that family first, right? No matter what kind of business or what you're doing, uh, of course, we are in a very challenging business and I got, you know, we always have heavy competition, but always family first. And uh, that makes life a little harder, right? It's not only that you're focusing on all these business uh, challenges and, and goals, you really have to have that sen sensitive side towards being there for your family, making sure that you can support them. Many of us have you know, parents who are probably senior citizens. Uh, that, that makes it all the more challenging for us. <clears throat> that I think is, is the first point, right? Uh, this is a dual battle that we are facing, unlike many times otherwise where as a founder you can just be a workaholic and just keep working on your business right this is the time your family needs you and i think really as, as a man as a woman as, as somebody who's a family member you have to step up and, and be there for your family no no two ways about that right um let me you know another another point that i i want to share is that last week's been you know the, the week that's gone by has been rather uh, you know it's been very uh, disturbing for me as well uh it's been very disturbing because i've heard from at least four of my very close founder friends that unfortunately they have you know closed down their business now being a founder for so many years i understand how difficult and how challenging it is and how motivated one must be to start a company now have these people made a mistake for which they are paying the price i don't think so and that's the saddest part uh, the circumstances is just beyond their control. Many of them have had to close their business really for, for no fault of theirs. Many of them have business models that have been dependent on the physical and the offline space. Even those who are in the SaaS and you know online driven space, today let's all you know face it, everybody is keeping their purses quite tight, right? Nobody's really pulling out their wallets and saying, hey, this is a time for us to experiment. So it really, you know, uh, though, though we are in a, in a slightly better position as a company, you know, a part of my heart breaks for all these people. And I feel very sad because founder to founder, I know what you guys go through. And, and it really breaks my heart that people with so much motivation, intelligence, integrity uh, have to, you know, shut down for no real fault of theirs. It is really heartbreaking, guys. Let's, uh, you know, look at another example, you know, just from our uh, experience and, and, and what we see. 
uh, as you as some of you may know I, i was formerly a state level cricketer in karnataka i was playing you know under 16s under 19s uh, representing the state robin utappa was was a you know teammate of mine stuart billy was a teammate of mine and one of the guys that we followed a little bit of course he was our junior uh, is mr virat kohli right the captain of the indian team one of the things i read about his stories you know and i'm sure many of you may be aware of that uh, i think he was playing a game for delhi uh, and that's when he knew that his father had passed away virat kohli actually decided that he would not go back even for his father's funeral i believe and he actually went and played for delhi i think that is a great source of example to show you know the the substance and the character that man is made with i think all of us can draw some inspiration from virat kohli uh, in what he did i think it's quite amazing and uh, it's a small lesson for all of us whether we like him or not is separate i think most people like him today unlike maybe 8 years ago when he was more a brash kid today he is the captain of india probably the number one batsman in the world and of course we bangaloreans are quite pissed with him the fact that he cannot win us a single cup in 10 years is is quite bad with the ipl but we can all learn a lot from uh, you know his own character and and the kind of substance that that man is made with right <clears throat> all the gloom and doom aside guys i think let's look at the silver lining in this dark cloud i always am someone who believes that you have to look at the positive side of of whatever is happening today in my view is the best time for startups again i don't think you heard me wrong there today is the best time for startups and let me explain why we have always competed against large companies and i i believe that a lot of us here are are part of the startup ecosystem many people here want to start up and one of the things that's you know constant is that we always face larger companies bigger competition what makes a company bigger is a, a few things they have been in the business longer they have more people on their team they have more customers they have more reputation they have large offices all around the world but today everybody is just one video link away it really doesn't matter how big your office was what was the kind of culture you had in the office you know the google free meals none of that matters whether you're a startup or whether you're a large enterprise everybody is working from their homes this in my view is the number one level playing field that you can ever think about nothing really differentiates a big company today from a small company guys and i just wanted i, I was discussing this couple of days ago with another founder friend of mine and we both understand that this is the most level playing field that we have ever seen ever you know this is really a fact i have seen this over 10 years there is never a case where the, the a, a sales person or a, a customer support or a marketing executive or a developer or a project manager a ui designer be it what you want there has never been a case where everybody has had a real level playing field like what's happened today and that might blow a lot of your minds right i don't think any of you have seen things this way but i think it's very important for us to understand what kind of opportunity has actually come to us today it doesn't matter how big the office is doesn't matter what kind of events they throw at the leela at the obroy everything is closed and if people cannot take this opportunity then trust me for a long long time i don't think there will be too many opportunities like this it is difficult to see the positive side but we as optimists we as people who want to look at the positive side we have to take every half opportunity to be able to capitalize and to grow our business and our startups let us understand adversity that is the whole topic of today build during adversity adversity is a relative term right gandhi ji in his talisman says if you think you do not have a good you know shoe or a slipper ask a man who does not have feet i think that's a very very profound statement that i read in my life and of course i think for us in the ncert guys who studied in cbsc this was the first page of many books of ours gandhi ji's talisman and very very profound statement by mahatma gandhi there so let us always understand that the adversity we are facing today and of course i myself have certain personal challenges that we are all going through let's understand that everybody has their own problems 
We are not the only people in the world today who are having issues. So let's try and be positive. Let's try and understand that there are people out there who have worse problems than we have today. And it is our responsibility as people who do not have the, the, the magnitude of problems other people have. It is our responsibility, not just our wish or not just our passion. It is our responsibility to do what we can to resurrect the economy. <clears throat> Many people now feel a self, sense of helplessness. This is very sad. We've always felt that we can, we are in control of our situation, that we can control the outcomes. But today, no matter what you believe, the external circumstance is not conducive to your mission and your drive. It's a fair statement. Helplessness is very sad. When something is completely out of your control, you feel, what can I do? But let's look at it this way. What can anybody do? Everybody is helpless today. So let us all understand that helplessness is a state of mind. If you really feel that you cannot do anything, that will be the fact. If you believe that you can do something and your will and your intelligence is directed in that direction, trust me, you will figure a way out. The only reason you have not figured a way out, I believe, is that you have not either don't have the will or you have not put the thinking in the place where it should be for a sustained period of time. You will definitely find a way out. As the old saying goes, where there is a will, there is a way. Some things don't change. Definitely for founders, this is my message. This is the time for your willpower to come to the forefront. Nothing else matters. Your experience of 15 years, 20 years in the industry, the kind of market you are in, the kind of contacts you have, the kind of capital that you have in your current account. Nothing matters today. What matters is your independent will. And trust me, that will will triumph. There is no question about this. Yesterday, I was in a very, very interesting, uh, you know, session also with Vijeta, where a wonderful person called Mr. Chinu Srinivasan addressed some very, very fundamental issues that people are facing today. One of the things that we spoke about is anger. Vijeta, I mean, I think it was a good topic yesterday. Anger is a very, very big, uh, you know, a big problem that many people are facing today. You have anger against the system. There is anger against the government for many people. Anger against those people around you when you go outside just for a short walk, people are not wearing a mask. There is anger sometimes with your own family. If they do not follow certain protocols that you strictly want them to adhere to. There is anger with your team for not delivering the way they should. There is anger with your customers saying, why don't you open up your wallets and throw money at us? There is also anger with your own self, thinking, why do I deserve this? Let us understand, there was a statement by the Buddha. And Gautam Buddha says, anger will only burn the person who holds it. I request all of you to also look at some of the Thai, uh, you know, I've not revealed too much of what Chinu said yesterday, because that I think is exclusive to Thai members. But he gave two, three very important tips how to overcome anger. Again, I was asked to just share my notes and I said that as a founder, anger or frustration against the establishment, against the system, against your competition is a very core aspect of why you do what you do. Why would you build new solutions if you were happy with the existing solutions? You would build them only because you are frustrated with them. You have sense of anger against the way they are running their business. Or you have a sense of frustration or, or you know, a, a, a sense of apathy towards what they're doing. You believe you have a better way. So what is very critical in these days is to channel that aggression in the right direction. Of course, I listen to a fair amount of heavy metal. And one of, one of the bands I listened to back in the day, of course, now I'm a little more you know, older and I'm a father, is a death metal band called Sepultura. A song by Sepultura called Roots, Bloody Roots. It starts with a quote saying, suffering should not be painful. It should give rise to something creative and beautiful. 
And that quote has always stuck with me. I've always felt that suffering causes way too much pain than it should create opportunities. When you're suffering, don't look at the pain. Look at what can you do. Look at the opportunity and try and build something beautiful out of that suffering. As many of you may know, most artists go through enormous amounts of pain before they create their art. In fact, many of them, you know, don't even live to see the, see, see the, you know, the wonderful applause they get because of their art. Many of it happens after they are dead long gone. So be an artist. That suffering should give rise to something creative and beautiful. Try and channelize that in what I call creative aggression. So I think then you will start seeing clear paths and clear direction, how you can start using this in a positive way. Today, we're also seeing that, as I said, there is a complete sense of gloom and doom around the ecosystem. Let us understand that there is an old saying that says, everything happens for the good. Sometimes you may feel, how is it true? Maybe it's not true. I've learned from my own experience and I'm sure many of the people here would have learned many times at some, you know, some point you will feel that, Hey, why is this happening to me? This is the worst thing that can happen to me in my life. But a few days later, a few weeks later, things change. And you'll realize why that happened. It shows you a brand new path, a brand new way that is probably way better than what you were doing before. Our family was going through a very serious problem a few years ago. We consulted many doctors. Nobody really seemed to have an answer for that. And it's somebody very close to me. What that doctor told my father is that just two words. He said, time heals. It's one of the most powerful statements I've heard in my life. This too shall pass. Time will heal but only for those who keep the faith. If you don't keep the faith, I don't believe that you will be there to see the beautiful life. So please remember this, time heals and this too shall pass. These are some of the notes I want to share today. I hope I have been crisp, very, very quick because this is not my real area of expertise. So what do I do personally to build during adversity? I'm saying this with all humility, guys. Last year, we were up against trillion dollar competition. Many people who believed that we were building something for the future immediately felt threatened. They felt, can this small team out here in Bangalore compete with companies out of Silicon Valley backed by billions and billions of dollars of cash reserves sitting in their banks? It is a challenging time for us, no doubt about it. A lot of people lost faith in us. But let me tell you now, past two quarters, we have used that to completely transform our business, to understand what are the gaps that is happening today in the ecosystem, that's happening in the video communication space. We have now come up with the virtual office, remote sales, remote support. These are areas that would not have happened if we were not faced with adversity. We would have just felt that what we are building, this browser-based conferencing, which of course Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, all of them built probably after we launched it. We would have felt this is the end game. But no, nothing can stop us. Nothing at all can stop us except ourselves. We just decided we are extending the time frame. We are going to be in this indefinitely. Nobody can stop us. And now we are seeing a lot of people switch to our platform. We are seeing a lot of people draw benefits that they will never draw out of the existing competition. Again, we have a long way to go. But I believe that my team, Akhil, myself, with the support of Vijeta, this whole wonderful Founders Feed community, the NASCOM folks, uh, the startups there, everybody has come together. And we have all fought through this massive, massive adversity. Trust me, guys, a lot of you guys are doing your pitch decks and you'll all have a competition slide there. 
Tell me how many of you have a competition slide that says you have $2 trillion competition staring at you. And the worst part is this. It is all free. What's your business model? What's the revenue? So I'm just saying out of experience, nothing can stop you. As long as your willpower is there, you are willing to put what it takes day in and day out. You have a team with you that's willing to back you and work in the way that you want and the way that they are self-motivated. This is again very, very critical. In times of adversity, it's very difficult for us to even motivate ourselves. We should not be with people who need motivation. It's too much to ask. We need people who are self-motivated. Please pick and choose your team now very carefully. You only need positive reinforcements. You don't need, you know, people who are going to be a you know, pain on you. You need to check on them. You need to motivate them. You need to guide them. Sometimes, of course, you need to guide them. But all the other things probably are not required. If there is somebody who takes up too much of your mind space, too much of your emotional energies, please cut that conversation as that. This is my single suggestion to you. It's not the quantity of your team that matters. It is the quality of your team. And in these times, the people who stick by you are gems. They are the absolute gems for you. And make sure that you are being a gem for them as well. You should be able to draw strength from each other. Nobody can be a drain on your energies. I'm very happy that my closed system, the, the, the team around us is extremely self-motivated. I wake up in the morning and even sometimes, you know, I'm human and I wake up sometimes a little bit feeling, oh, what's happening? The moment I do my nine o'clock call, everything's back to normal. That's a clockwork that never stops. It is the clockwork that makes us going. It's not us. So please surround yourselves with positive people, well-wishers. That's very, very important in these times. So these are some of the notes I want to share. Now I just want to share with you a few of my books that I'm reading. Of course, there are a lot more here. But I want to share maybe, I don't know, I have about 10, 12 books here that I refer to on a constant basis. So if Vijayata, if you give me the permission, I'll just, I'm sure you also have a massive book uh, thing there. And I think at this time, as they say, reading maketh a complete man. I'll just twist Francis Bacon's statement to say reading maketh a happy man. Let us go to one of the old ones. Something I bought many, many years ago before even I started. I'm sure all of you, many of you have read this book. I will start from LKG and then I would move to PhD. Very, very basic book. The monk who sold his Ferrari. This is very important for all us entrepreneurs. It's been a while since I referred this, but gives an idea of how to live a very simplistic life. In these times, you have to try and live as simple as possible. Here is a book I picked up long back and I refer to it a lot. It's a fantastic book. It says, all I really need to know I learned in kindergarten. It's by Robert Fulgur. It's a fantastic book. It teaches you to think like a child. And look at the topic. Yes, you know Everything I need to learn, I learned in kindergarten. And I must tell you that past one year with my son, just watching him grow has been one of my biggest learning experiences. Just seeing how a newborn baby adapts to the world, how they pick up things, how they learn has been a great learning for me as well. Critical in these times to share a laugh. This was a book given to me probably 25 years ago. As you can see, it's hardbound. In the olden days, we used to bind our books. I bound this guy. It was gifted gift to me from a guy who came from Singapore. He liked me a lot as a small child, as a kid. And he said, Jagat, you read this book. It's called the Smart Kids Joke Book on one side. And the other side is called the Dumb Parents Joke Book. It's a fantastic book. You guys, should, if you get your hands on it, check it out. It'll crack you up. Another book I'm reading a little bit. Of course, I, I, I just glimpsed through. I don't have so much time to go through heavy, heavy books. It's called The Art of Thinking Clearly. It's a fantastic book. Rolf Dobelli. Very, very nice, beautiful, beautiful book here. An old favorite of mine, Mr. Seth Godin. In fact, he was one of the reasons I started business 12 years ago. 
when I read about the purple cow and, and read about his concepts and his philosophies, when he was vice president of marketing at Yahoo, I became a big fan of Seth Godin. I started reading his blogs, one of the top blogs in the world. It's called Tribes. Fantastic. How do you build tribes? I read very, very limited fiction. I generally, as you can see, I, I'm generally reading nonfiction, sharing three books that I read. I've read them. I've read them multiple times. You can see from the, the kind of, you know, uh, it's, it's a worn out book. Fantastic book here by Robert Persig, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, one of my favorites. It gives me a lot of life direction. I really enjoy this book. I'm a big fan of Herman Hess. Nasus and Goldman, for all of you who want to check out Herman Hess, I suggest fiction, fantastic book. Again, I'm a big Robert M. Persick fan, Leela. Very, very important that you kind of read and, and kind of appreciate this. <clears throat> ton of other stuff. I can go on and on, guys, but I hope I'm able to, you know, give you some tips here. Cre lovely book, Creative Aggression. You can also just take snapshots. The Art of Assertive Living. Very nice book. An old favorite again, Edward de Bono, one of the gurus. Six thinking hacks. In these times, it's not enough to think in one direction. You have to think in multiple directions. You have to wear a white hat. You have to wear, again, this is not SEO. <laughs> Blue hat, red hat. Different ways of thinking to give you perspectives. Fantastic book. Here is a book I picked up at a, okay, I have learned to meditate bookmark here, but that's a little later. I picked this up at a, what do you call a Raddiwala, a newspaper, uh, you know, old newspaper shop. One of my favorite books of all time. It's called Gorilla. It's by Charles Thea. He talks about how small teams and small armies basically take on big, arm big armies. It's a fantastic book. It's quite amazing. And you can see it's, you know, red color. So it shows you how old the book is. It's fantastic. You guys should pick this up. Any startup should think of themselves as guerrilla warriors. You guys are fighting big, big armies. Take every initiative you can to beat them. I have a ton of other stuff here. I mean, if I could just, you know, kind of show you, this is the, this is a big book rack. I got like a whole lot of books, right? So I, I spent a lot of my time reading. I got Franz Kafka. I got a whole bunch of, I'm a music freak, as many of you might imagine. That's Jimi Hendrix. It's The Clash, one of my favorite bands. I have Freddie Mercury. I have David Bowie. I have Elvis Presley here. I got to clean up this whole thing anyway. So I got Phil Collins. Right? So surround yourself with books. Life, you know, make becomes very, very easy. An old favorite. War and Peace, Leo Tolstoy. Life, this is life, you know. And of course, as Indians, one of my favorite books, Kautilya, the Artha Shastra. Any businessman, you have to be reading this book. 300 BC, 300 BC. And if you get into the book, if you start reading it, you'll just get blown. You'll just blow your mind. Because I'm a Star Wars fan. I got a lot of Star Wars books. Richard Branson, right? I mean, a whole ton of them, right? I can just go on and on. Richard Branson again. Of course, I got three, four Steve Jobs books. <laughs> so we could just go on and on, guys. Books keep us alive. Books are very, very important. And in these times, you know, my last few, few minutes, I want to dedicate to three books that I think I highly recommend right now in these times for everybody. A little bit of spirituality here. Uh, let me say four books. Number one is, uh, again, this is not to do with religion. This is to do with philosophy and spirituality, guys. It's called The Message of the Upanishads. Very, very important book. The Upanishads, many people say that this is the essence of, of Hindu thinking or, or Vedic thinking. The kind of loftiness and sublimeness of the text is unbelievable. And three books here that I think everyone should read. Again, it's an old book. I've read this multiple times and enjoy. It's by Vivekananda. It's called Vedanta, Voice of Freedom. And two books to sign off for now. Of course, I got 
you know, you should read this by Neil Ferguson, The Square Tower. Michio Kaku, of course, Future of Humanity, goes without saying. I'm a big Franz Kafka fan. You must read a lot of his short stories. It will change your perspective on life. Franz Kafka. Yep, that's about it. And, and here is the last two books. Hatha Yoga Pradipika. For anyone who wants to practice yoga, I think you must refer to Hatha Yoga. Of course, there are various types of yoga. It really doesn't matter which of these you follow, as long as you follow something. Later, as you evolve, you may choose one over the other. Very, very nice book. And this is by Ganapati Sachinanda Swami, Kriya Yoga. That's about it. I think books keep us alive. I hope I've shared some books and I hope some of you can enjoy uh, a good read. So that's it from me, Chief. Uh, that, that's my views. I keep myself completely motivated, surrounded by books and, and wonderful people like you and Akhil and everyone and our, and our team. Over to you, sir. I mean, yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jagat. And guys, I just kept the raise hand open, uh, the raise hand option. Anyone wants to come in, say hi, please do that. Okay. Right. You can see that. Uh, and I've enabled the raise hand. All right. So great, Jagat. Thank you so much. I've also shared a couple of programs. Also, there's the 19th, as I said, 19th May. We're having a women entrepreneur program. So please join in. And uh, it's open to all entrepreneurs, members, enablers, investors. We want you there. We're also looking at uh, healthcare startups who are ready to deploy. Uh, you know, a lot of, as you know, Ty would know a lot of investors. We would know a lot of people in the various cities and countries because of the pandemic related activities. Uh, we have been hearing for cries around uh, deployment of medicines, deployment of oxygen cylinders, ventilators, et cetera, et cetera. So we're opening a call, like, you know, any startups that we can know about, just fill up the form, let us know, and then we will spread the word out to our community. Because we have a lot of people who are interested to interact and help these startups to grow to the next level. So as people are coming in, I'll just quickly show you some of the books, old books, but you know, maybe worth reading. Stephen Covey, one of the best. Okay, I read a lot of his uh, books. Okay, here you're seeing this, one of the very famous older books, but very interesting. All right, this is something very nice. Okay, I, I think eat the frog. Something that we have to kind of, uh, you know, remind Ryan ourselves. Tracy. Ryan Tracy is just brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan Tracy is amazing. Okay. Then we have, uh, again, Stephen Covey, because he's got led, these are all different books, right? The third alternative, right? No, it's, then one more gentleman that I really highly recommend, okay, Ram Tiran. He writes amazing stuff, all management, but very nice. Uh, one more book is called The Art of the Good Life, Jagat. You, you shared one book, but this yeah, is a very, very yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a great writer. I mean, I would really recommend that you guys read up about him. Okay. Of course, you know, it's important to understand how the innovation clusters operate all across the world. Like what's happening in Singapore, Israel, London, and all these places. How do they build it? How do they collaborate? And, you know, as founders, you must reach out to more and more people from diverse, from diverse backgrounds. Okay. Re reach out to academia, reach out to students, reach, reach out to researchers. Reach out to your peers, right? I mean, in 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 the your own city, within your networks on LinkedIn, there will be so many founders whom you are connected with. Please talk to them, because these will really make a big difference. Because they are fighting the same battles, they are also looking at how they can expand, find funding, uh, get new customers, expand globally. So maybe there is something that you can collaborate on. Can you partner together? Can you work together and move forward? This is very important. Okay. Then again, an old book. Some very good uh, writers, Michael Hammer and uh, James Champy. This book has been uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, re-engineered literally many times, updated. So if you go to the YouTube or if you go to the, you know, the latest PDFs or whatever it is, or you get, you know, even if you extract samples of this, say from uh, Kindle, you get to read about how they thought, what was happening. And, you know, Tom Peters in search of excellence, I would recommend that. Of course, it's not just about foreign books or foreign readers, writers who are writing for the Western market. I would also recommend that you should read about Indian business leaders from smaller towns. Okay? Because they have really grown, they have really built companies, they have fostered uh, the innovation clusters, they have helped their teams, their families, their employees to a large level. So that, that culture that they have is very different and very important. So maybe there's a lot that we can learn from these people. Okay? So again, going back, 
I am just seeing if anyone has done a raise hand. Uh, we have Nagaraja, we have Abdul, we have. But just only the request is that guys only join in if you are if you are on a good network and if you are on a laptop. Okay, do not join on a mobile or things because it kind of disturbs the ambience. Okay, but anyone who's who can join in on a proper connection and who are just sitting Narayan in the systems, join in. Okay. Satya Narayan and raise hand. Uh, not too sure if anyone has. Please, we can call them in. Huh? I see that Gauss is there, Subhanjan is there. Subhanjan is doing a lot of great work with his podcasts around SaaS, around sales. Okay, Ishu Bansal again is into his logistics startup. Hi, Ishu, good to see you here. Chetak, hope your throat is better. And uh, one of the you know fast growing cybersecurity firms is doing a lot of training and consulting around cybersecurity. So glad to have you guys here. Gauss is from uh, the Sayadri College of Engineering. They're doing some phenomenal workshops and helping students. So one quick shout out that any one of you guys are looking for top notch uh, interns who can work together and collab together for use cases. Okay, they they is very unique model that they've got at Sayadri College. Uh, it's run by Johnson, uh, another good friend. And uh, that's one more shout out to them. So guys, you can share some of your details and how to get in touch with you on the chat as well. So everyone can do that. So this is my ecosystem updates, right? We have the Thai Women Entrepreneur Program happening on 19th, healthcare startups. Today we have a Jagat 6 to 7. We have a business mentoring session. Again, open to all. I will share it on the founders feed and a few other WhatsApp groups after 5.30. Once we are done over here, everyone is uh, welcome. You have We have two very good uh, folks out there. Yeah, is there any questions? Okay, Nagaraj is asking, looking for investors. So please fill up the form, write to people. You should look for investors by writing to them. Okay, Nagaraja, that's the best way to do it. You don't. There are no. There are no introductions required. No references required. Write to people. Okay, LinkedIn is the most powerful tool. There are a couple of people who raised hand, but I just saw that the video is not on. Guys, we expect that you have your video there, so it's a lot more authentic, right? So uh -huh. please feel free to share. Yeah. Yes, yes. On video, on a proper connection. And not on mobile, okay? Because it's a very disruptive experience for the audience. Remember, we owe the audience a good experience, and that's the most important thing for us, okay? So, Jagat, we should also talk about uh, you know the factor that uh, it's not just about time. Like there are a lot of good programs being run by various people. Like if you are looking for you know our, we work with all the accelerators. So there's Cisco, there is NetApp, there is Loves, there's ABN Web. By the way, has got a global program that is running right now. They're looking for startups in their in their in their entire global program, right? Whether it's in Africa or Europe or in India, they're looking for startups who can work with them. ABN Web, of course, is a beer company, and anything around water, financials, fintech, so many things. They have, it's out there. I've been sharing it on my timelines as well, and we've been recently having a lot of uh, sessions around that. So it's open to people. Uh, Sogen is also looking for fintech startups globally. Globally, okay. So it's a tough competition, but you should apply. You should apply. It's all available. We have shared it on our timelines. So these are some of the ecosystems updates, uh, Jagat. And I know that it is 5:15. We should not. Uh, we should wind up in the next, uh, say, 10-15 minutes. But I want to quickly touch base about a couple of things. All right. And this is about the digital networking space. So, for example, here as well, right? We, why do we give you this raise hand option? We can just continue talking and uh, close it down. But we want founders and startups to have a voice, to have a platform. Uh, just to let you know that it's a, of course, it's not a big uh, celebration or something, but uh, more than 200 founders who are there in founders feed, we are sharing resources, we are sharing, uh, you know, whatever that is there, programs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, articles that will help founders. It could be across tech, non-tech, anything, okay? Because even uh, direct to consumer, there is a lot of good stuff happening. There is a lot of uh, really, really quality programs that are there for entrepreneurs across all uh, sectors. Okay, and Jagat, there is a. I think I would. I mean, uh, also highly recommend that you should see some of the old recordings that are there on Vidphone TV, because we have done what about 30 episodes, 30 plus episodes of Startup Sunday. We have done about 50 episodes combining Vidphone Show, League of Extraordinary Startups, Pitch Techs, which our good friend Ashutosh has been doing. Okay, and uh, you know, of course, Subhanjan also does uh, a lot of things. Chetak, got your message that you can't talk. Sore throat is still on. No worries, buddy. No worries. Absolutely no problem. If he's hearing us, I mean, I think he's doing some fantastic work with all the podcasts and the vidcasts. Feel free to pop in, Shubhanjan. I mean, we would love to hear about your uh, upcoming ones. Yes. Around SaaS and uh, B2B sales, global expansion. You know, hats off, Subhanjan. Relentless. 
very very high quality shares very good insights and uh, jagat as i was saying about the vidphone the tv videos right there are a lot of snippets how do i get in just click on the we have given the raise hand option ah, okay okay jagat is, is he please, please go ahead you you want to take it yeah you yeah, know you take it you take it no problem subhanjan is in okay yeah, i saw that the, the arrow went ah, he's here yeah yeah hi hi guys hello sir how are you i'm fine i'm fine thank you thanks for the thanks for the kind words you guys tell about me you know <laughs> old old war horse so <laughs> need some need some tlc thank you very much so uh, yeah so uh, about the show you know right now on the show that we run on uh, sales experts channel uh, we are running a special on fixing the primary problem in b2b sales which is called which is which is lead to conversion right and i have spoken to about 24 experts from all over the world and 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 those are running like every week second edition went out yesterday uh and that so so basically i'm i'm trying to focus on issues about sales which uh, which we don't talk about one is this lead to conversion um, uh, you know jagat you know very well about how how critical that is i also i'm going to do a series on marketing and sales alignment because it baffles me that we talk to people all over the world we have this fantastic digital ecosystem yet i apparently two groups in the same company can't talk to each other especially marketing and sales it it, it beats me completely you know so uh, so that's the next one but but i think the the critical part of what you are doing and what vijeta is doing and why i popped in because i thought it was important to tell people that you know working for each other and spending some time giving back and it doesn't matter who you are in what stage you are all of us can give something and contribute something uh, is is very good for the soul and and, uh, and it, everything doesn't have to translate into into commercials it eventually will i know some of, like like you said uh, about some of the people who had to close down their startups it's it's unfortunate no doubt and 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 we go through that like i was talking to my dad this morning who is 93 and basically he said you know life is about half light and half darkness right so you you i mean you have no option unless you're living in norway and then it's like 6 months of light and 6 months of darkness so you can choose what what period you want to go through but i think i think i totally uh, totally uh, you know echo your sentiment jagat that i think doing things for others at this point of time is very critical and uh, my uh, two cents to all founders is that focus on revenue relentlessly you, you know we are too focused on funding and that that's that's i i understand i get it it gets you press and you believe that's a great thing but it's like it's like sort of being selected for the indian team but not getting to play or when you when you actually play you do a bad job and you can't celebrate the selection into indian team it's great uh, you started a startup and all that uh, but i think i think relentless focus on revenue which is obviously means relentless focus on the customer i think that's the salvation because raising money i mean despite all the global issues and uh, despite the fact that more money is available in the system it will only get concentrated on the top few startups so guys who are like us who are sort of in the early stages will have significant difficulty in the coming days to raise money the only way to survive is to is to get customers money and doesn't cost dilution see it works so <laughs> that said uh, yeah i'm i'm i i really appreciate what you guys are doing jagat you have been consistent i mean if i have been consistent i think you guys are more consistent than me uh, and uh, vijeta you know hats off for what you are doing on the founders uh, feed i i really appreciate and i just thought i'll just pop in and say hello to you guys thank you so much yes, thank you subhanjan and i think we echo your thoughts here money from customers and sales business development expansion is so important and what are happens there are a lot of companies still growing and making money right so we just have to yeah. understand take a leaf from their book learn from them interact with them and uh, and that's it that's how it will grow perfect boss thank Absolutely. you thank you subhanjan 
we need to keep talking of course we are we are planning a few yes. things together yeah we got to do that yes, yes. all right but thank you guys yes <laughs> thanks jagar thanks for calling me thank you hey, not a problem not a problem thank you buddy okay so jagat anyone else i just want i just want to make sure i have not missed out anyone if anyone is raising their hand is on a good connection you saw how subhanjan right it comes so neatly so cleanly the audience could hear him and that's what we want to give right we owe you guys a great experience okay and hats off i think shubhanjan also has been relentless he's doing wonderful work wonderful work guys, uh, yeah my i would say you know check out pitch link they connecting the buyers the buyer platform must uh, really check it out yeah. really good work. and also if akil or jagat you guys can also share about if people want to access the previous episodes they want to see because we have some great episodes on sales and pitching and prepare preparations and uh, you know customer uh, acquisitions etc etc done by our friends and all the startup sunday episodes so they must be able to go and see that yeah right the witphone yeah the, the startup sunday so akil has shared that i think that's a very critical thing to do guys very useful and akil will also maybe okay i will i will do it myself i will also share it on the the founders feed and you know we should push it out in other places because let startups take these resources okay let them use it uh, to their uh, hearts content <laughs> okay and uh, jagat now i want to just very quickly also talk about the resources right you know spotify is another great uh, thing yeah. and uh, there are so many beautiful blogs over there and uh, medium has got blogs spotify has got you know the audio stuff etc etc so how can we you know i mean how does one uh, utilize time well productivity tools very quick crisp thing i know that you use asana and other things can you talk about that a little bit yeah time management i think is always critical right and especially as a founder uh, it really depends i think a lot on your team size i think that really uh, it matters if you have a lot of people working with you you can be li- probably a little more liberal with your time but i think if you're running a small team like like most of us probably are running look I, the way i try to I, i kind of i've always worked on a particular schedule i've, I've said this before uh, every day i try and do six or seven things right and and, and running a business is i say like seven or eight things that you need to be running there are four things that are customer facing which i call external which is advertising sales marketing and support and i say there are four things that are internal which is to do with product slash engineering slash technology i i treat it as one thing product engineering and technology of course you have finance you have your admin ops and typically you may have hr so I I look at like eight things in a day that I kind of skim through always every day I'm doing something on these as a founder I, I and typically I'm spending around an hour to hour and a half on most of these topics right that's that's the way I approach it now other people may have different methods that work for them uh, this is something that works for me I treat it very much like school like I have a timetable uh, and you know that you have four classes before lunch and you have three classes after lunch something like this but I think that really works for me it's very simplistic uh one to one and a half hours uh of course take a break uh, you know I, i'm sure all of us are adult enough to understand you have to take a break but yeah this is how i i try and handle it right i try and do one to one and a half hours of of these some days there may be more of one less of one if i have to do some investor decks i have to refine i, I spend more time on the finance if i have to do more of if i have more customer demos i do more demos and many times i spend a lot of my time on product and engineering uh, most times in fact I, i spend a lot of my time on product and engineering So that's typically how I do it, right? And of course, you said tools. I use Asana uh, a lot. Uh, that's pretty much what I use to collaborate with the team, etc. But typically, I'm using my whiteboard, uh, you know, for most of my work. It's organic, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jagat. So we have five more minutes. All right. I I'm just reading out some of the messages that is coming in from uh, people. Uh, I agree with you, Chetak, that it's good to have a schedule planned. take time out for each activity if you have to allocate some time for ad hoc work as and when it comes up no, you know my, my take on that is that all the ad hoc work you do as an entrepreneur typically is amongst these eight blocks there's nothing outside of these eight blocks if someone can tell me it's great okay and yes emergencies will come up people will ask you for things that uh, you don't have to say yes to but maybe you don't have a choice uh, you are answerable to customers you are answerable to your investors you are answerable to your family so sometimes you have to kind of maybe be little bit flexible there's no choice but then you got to get back to what needs to be done okay come what may whatever it is i mean we can't let people down and some other way to figure out those <laughs> problems Vijay, how do you manage i'm curious to throw this no back. no idea buddy no idea i'm <laughs> I, i'm really bad i'm really 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 bad 
Okay. <laughs> Come on, you are doing so many things. I'm sure you have some secret sauce going on there. I don't know, yeah. It's all it's all the blessings of the people that I work with, my team, and you know, good people who kind of help me to go through everything. Okay, and family support as well. That's something very yes. critical, very important. And uh, yeah, but I was just about to say, right, Jagat? Maybe I mean something that we have discussed, right? Is deep work, deep work concept also, right? That you know, just write down that okay, these are the three, four things that come what may I need to do now. I need to focus on this. So I keep a small. I mean, I, I, I keep a lot of journals, books. I'll write these things down, and then I try to not move out till I finish these three, four things. Okay. And yes, there's a lot of things keep coming, right? Because we do. I mean, every day I'm involved in maybe two, three webinars. We are doing these talks. We are doing outreach. So it's not easy. We are we are, we are to deal with so many people. Partners there, there, are there. there but there, then that's life. That's life, man. You know, there was a joke that I heard. I uh, said that you know I have 26 hours a day because I wake up two hours earlier. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I do. But I start my day a little bit early. I don't really end my day. But look, it's also commitment and passion, man. I know how tough it is, Jagat. For a lot of people, so whatever. You want to yeah. take? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's see what is this. What is this comment that is coming? If anyone wants to come in, hit me up. And then there's any other uh, comments that is coming. I think Chetak also saying it's better to have more customers organically than looking for investors. Yes, it's not that investors are bad, but in the hunt for investors and the time that you spend looking for investors, don't ignore your customers. Don't ignore the product that you're building. Okay. And it's a very wrong thing to say that if I don't get investment, I can't grow or I can't because that's dangerous, isn't it? Because that's not something that, you know, customers, you have to get customers, guys. And believe me, I think Jagad, you'd agree. You get customers, then the investors will chase you. You don't have to chase the investor. Then you have to just negotiate well. You have to just negotiate smart. And <laughs> Good position to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So if there's anyone else who wants to Excuse raise my, hand. Uh, you want to take that? I mean, shall I take that? Harish, it's a very interesting. At what point do you think... Uh, a startup founder should give up, accept the reality. So see, now reality can be distorted. <laughs> Whose reality are you talking about is one thing, Harish. But at the same time, look, yeah, there's no shame if something is not going the way you want, right? The world circumstances change. Think about all the people who one and a half years back were booming. I repeat, they were booming in travel. They were booming in restaurants. They were mm -hmm. booming with anything to do with, uh, you know, co-working, co-living, uh, destination management. Uh, they were doing so well with all these things and then suddenly the pandemic has come and they've gotten into trouble right so what do you do physical physical anything to do with physical contact like museums are not doing well uh, people who are running cafes are not doing well people who are running music you know whatever i mean i can give you a such a long list of industries the shipping industry the cruise line industry which is such a big employment i think airlines they're all bleeding is it their fault we don't know right because it just happened so what do you do so i mean that is a reality and that is something that they have to survive and they have to really cut a lot of corners and everything. Okay. But then see, this is the question that I have for you. Okay. Imagine that you say, I'm giving up in general. On, your, you know, on your current uh, venture or whatever it is. Right. But, but then what next? You have a team, you have a family, you may have people that you have borrowed money from or you owe people money. So figure those things also out. It's not just about giving up and sitting at home. What next for you? Think about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Harish, I you know, uh, just want to say this. Uh, See, why startups fail or why they do is, is, is there are a lot of theoretical answers to that, right? You don't find product market fit. You run out of capital. Uh, you have too much competition. Uh, you, you realize, you know, th these are typical things that, and you can go and search why startups fail and that will pretty much answer your, your answer theoretically. But I think there is an absolute way to look at this as an individual, as a founder. And to me, right, uh, and I'm, this is again a very personal view, right? Guys will, guys will disagree. They may. Uh, we don't give up. Maybe death will stop it, right? <laughs> Number one. But the second thing is that when you wake up in the morning uh, and you don't have the kind of motivation that you thought you should be having, then you must really question uh, what you want to do. I think it's really an internal thing. Giving up is a very internal thing. So if you wake up many mornings in a row and you feel that, well, you know, I'm not really enjoying what I'm doing. It's pretty much like how a lot of sportsmen or, you know, artists also, get, you know, kind of retire, right? That's the answer they give. If I wake up too many mornings and I find that my body is not there, mind is not there, then maybe it's time to retire. So I think that may be your internal answer. External answer, you know, you can Google it, why startups fail, and I think you'll get 10 reasons why they don't. Perfect. Okay. It's 5.30, Jagat. So is there anyone else who has raised hand? Was I saw ping? I'm not too sure. Banjan again, yeah. Welcome. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to weigh in on the issue that Harish told. So you, you give a philosophical answer as always, Jagat. Uh, uh, but the, the way I look at it is, 
you have a hypothesis based on which you have started a startup you, you're not starting a startup for your own sake you are starting a startup because you believe there is a problem that exists that needs solution and the fact that people for whom you will solve the problem will pay for their solution my question is have you gone out and spoken to 100 of these people who you think are having this problem and are willing to pay for the solution if you see if you see that people are not paying for the solution you have two options one accept that this problem is not worth going after and and shut down or pivot so because you'll get feedback from these 100 people you'll learn some new things you will say okay problem is not in my in my hand but in my shoulder so so you say okay i'll create a startup for the shoulder pain and not for the hand pain so these are the two options but the first step is not i mean what what jagat says is absolutely if you don't have motivation you are not, if you're waking up feeling dull my point is you should not be even reaching there the reason jagat is talking of 10 years of startup shape or what i'm doing is because we are constantly sort of looking and validating and whatever is not working throwing it out and doing something new uh, jagat is innovating if you look at his platform he has innovated over the last many months and those innovation is not happening because he's waking up with those dreams the innovation is happening because he's intensely talking to his users that's where the innovation is coming from uh, now jagat do correct me i mean i i don't want to step in your territory but i'm i'm saying that the the key is that the customer for whom you are building will tell you shut this down because i don't need it that's it perfectly said that's it i think old war horses always have the right answers <laughs> <laughs> brilliantly said well done yeah yeah perfect perfect thanks guys so listen it is 532 now jagat we should not uh, you know take up more time we should always be as crisp as possible uh, so once again a shout out i see the, i mean so many names but still i should try to read as many as i can we have rv ready we have J joss we have gm priya darshan we have akil abdul harish ishu kiran chetak of course subanjan has joined us in spain he has spoken very vociferously gauss is here from uh, Sadri College, many people who have been our well-wishers, part of Founders Feed. And uh, Jagat, I've also shared some of these resources back into the Founders Feed as well. We can push it out to maybe the Time Members Forum, InQ Innovation, uh, WhatsApp groups, etc., etc. So as many people can benefit as possible. Okay. And uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much, Jagat and Akhil, for setting this up, taking your time out, lending your platform to this beautiful initiative. A lot of uh, respect for that as well. Thank you, Vijeta, as always. I think now you're ready, hurry, heading to your next webinar. So yeah, that, that, that is that is 25 minutes away. No problem. Plenty of time. <laughs> I hope All right. Everyone's learned. I mean, I hope anybody, everyone's benefited. That's why we do this. Uh, please drop us a comment or, you know, uh, social media. We're always active. If anyone's not on Founders Feed, reach out to one of us. Uh, if you're a founder, you know, happy to, you know, uh, have you yeah. in our group as well. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that. And it's uh, strictly around startups, founders, resources. Uh, we keep sharing research reports and links, which is talking about the various opportunities, the programs, where can startups take uh, leverage of the various things that are going on from the ecosystem and community for growth. And of course, uh, people like Saidri College are providing interns, etc. Then you have platforms, the virtual office platform like how Bitphone has got, right? So that's what we'll be focusing and talking about and sharing. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, Harish. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Abdul. And uh, take care, guys. Thank you. Be safe. And uh, before we sign off, Jagat, tomorrow, of course, 6 to 7, we'll be doing a Startup Sunday. Uh, would you be organizing something for the morning as well? Is there any Bitphone show or something that is being planned by you? Just just confirming that, but definitely we'll keep the team involved. I mean, I think, as you know, there are a couple of uh, yeah, yeah. people who yeah, might but it's, Yeah, but Startup Sunday, tomorrow, 6, 6 to 7, is definitely on. Absolutely. And uh, we want you guys to be there. And, uh, you know, once again, right, we will make this raise hand option available. Please come, please talk, share your views. Let us know what is happening out there, what is going on. We need to know about these things. It's very and critical for us. Invite right? your as well, guys. My suggestion yeah, is yeah. WhatsApp, it, it costs you nothing. You know, maybe they'll benefit a lot from it. So Absolutely. It's it's about a digital networking, isn't it? we got to catch up with each other. Absolutely. Alrighty. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And take care. Bye-bye.